Welcome to Highline Excel class number 25. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook. Week 5, Business 214. Hey, if you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Week 5 website. Hey, we got to talk about errors and problems with spreadsheets and how to fix them. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, these on the next three sheet tabs. Let's just start out with the, the average function. Uh, we want to take an average, which is an arithmetic mean, of these values here. So we want to add them up and divide by the count. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 divided by 1, 2, 3 is 3. We'll use the average function, average, and highlight this range. Those are relative cell references. So when I control enter and copy it over, it works just fine. But wait, wait a second. Is this one right? I wanted to do 2, 0, 4. Let's make sure. Well, let's click here and hit the F2 key. Sure enough, it's looking at the right cells. Ah, but the average function will ignore blanks. So if this really is a zero score, you need to type a zero here. As soon as I type a zero here, watch what happens here. It'll recalculate. Now it's going adding these three things, which we get six, and divide by the count three, which gives us two. Now, sometimes uh, if you have a spreadsheet and here are our values, we want to do our average function. Now, we want to see a couple tricks here. We notice that they're blanks, but we're just going to pretend like we didn't notice that and we thought that the average function would calculate as if there was a zero there. We're going to see how to fix that. We're also going to see a go to trick and how to use control enter. So I want to highlight all these cells right here. And in the active cell right there, I'm going to type my formula. In this case, the average function equals AVER average. I'm going to highlight the that many cells directly above me as a relative cell reference. Close parentheses. Now, the fact that I have all the cells highlighted. When I hold Control and tap Enter, I'm telling Excel, please populate all of those cells with that formula. Control Enter, and I got it. Now the problem is you already have this set up. And uh, instead of clicking in each cell and typing a 0, especially for a huge data set, you simply highlight all of the cells. And we'll use Go To. Now Go To is the F5 key. That works in every version. I hardly even know where it is in uh, the ribbon. I think it's home uh, somewhere over here. Oh, right here. There you go. Go to. Uh, go to special if you like that. Um, there's even some new options in 2007. In earlier versions, it was in the edit menu. But I'm going to hit F5. F5. And there it is, go to, you can uh, type in a cell reference and hit OK, and it will take you there. Or you have your name, so you could select one and click OK, and it will bring you to that part of your spreadsheet. But this is an awesome button, special. And no way, instantly we have access to uh, blanks. If we click OK, it instantly highlights all blanks. If we had objects like five charts and we want to delete them, we just click on that and click OK, and it highlight all the charts. Conditional formatting, data validation. So if you forgot where your conditional formatting data validation is, highlight those and click OK. Formulas, if you wanted to highlight just the cells with formulas. But there we go, blanks. And instantly you can see they're highlighted. Now we're going to use our Control Enter to populate all the cells with exactly what we want, the number 0. So I type a 0. Notice the active cell is right there, 0. And now the fact that I control enter, it populates all of those go to highlighted cells. Instantly, our average function is now uh, calculating correctly because we wanted a zero there. Now, the opposite of that is true, too. Some people uh, put zeros in and expect the average function to ignore them. Forget it. That's not the case. So if you really, if this person here miss, um was exempt from this test for some reason, and it was not to be counted in our average, you would need to remove that 0. If you wanted the 0, then, you, then you'd have to do uh, s uh, some other type of formula. But here, we're just going to delete it. And you can see when I hit the Delete key, this will update. Now let's talk about the adding and some problems you could have with adding. Here, what I've done is I've typed a number 1, which is 
if I hit F2, you can see it's actually a number. You can immediately tell it's aligned to the left, so you know it's a number. Now I'm going to hit F2 here, and you can see this is entered in as apostrophe, or the cell could be formatted as text. There's a problem here if you have text. And really, it's not usually a problem from typing data in. It's, a t it's usually a problem when you get a data dump from, from a database. But here it is, Alt equals is the keyboard shortcut for auto sum. It doesn't even guess right because it bumps into that text. But let's say you just highlight this and you enter. You can see that doesn't work. Now here's a bad way to solve this problem, but just so you know that this is how Excel calculates, equals this plus this plus this. The plus symbol will add this. And this, these numbers right here, they're called numbers stored as text. So Excel thinks it's a word. But you could see that plus, plus, plus would solve that. That is not a good way. You never want to use formulas. We've talked about why using formulas like this are not good. So a better way to solve it, especially when you have a big data dump, is to convert all of the text entries to numbers. Now, there's a bunch of ways we can do this. I'm going to show you two. A fast way to do it is to use text to column. Highlight the column, and you you got to be careful if you have um, if you're using text to column for other tricks like separating data you would never want data here to the right but if you have only columns uh, only numbers and some of them are text this trick will work go up to data text to column in earlier versions it's the data menu text to column you just open it up and immediately when it comes up you see this uh, wizard right here. You just click Finish. That's it. You don't even have to bother. Um, in our last uh, last week, we saw how to use this for importing text. But here, you just click Finish, and boom, it instantly converts all those numbers to text. Here's another trick. Type 0, Control-Enter, Copy. And now we've copied 0. And instead of pasting, I want to go to Paste Special, which is up here, Paste uh, Special. But in all versions, you can right click once you've copied that 0 and point to Paste Special. And we'll use Operation Add. Operation. So this is a Paste Special where we can multiply everything by 0 or divide or subtract. We want to add. It adds zeros to all of them. The act of adding a 0 to text will convert that text number back to a number. Click OK. And so that those are two ways to deal with text, uh, a number that's stored as text when you need to convert them back. Now, uh, when we Alt equals, we get the correct uh, number. Errors. Let's click over here. A bunch of different kinds of errors. All right, we have a, I have a column of errors here and some notes over here that you can read. This is a common. Um, pound sign error, and it means one of two things. Our example here means that the column is not wide enough. So when you double click the column up here, then finally it's got some breathing room in it. We'll show you. You can also get the pound error when you uh, have negative time. So when you subtract time, which we've looked about looked at before in this class, you take the later time minus the earlier time. But if you do the reverse, taking the earlier time minus earlier time, minus the later time, you get this error. But so we saw here just that one example. It is the column is not wide enough. Name, let's look at this here. Name means that there's a word in a formula that it's not recognizing as a name. There's two ways to solve this. If you really meant to have in quotes, like when you're doing text formula, then you could solve it by putting quotes around it. And it, of course, will not evaluate to a name error. Control Z. The more likely uh, problem is that you forgot to name some range. So let's click right here. I'm going to type 4. And then I'm going to name that cell. I'm going to click up in the name box and name it red. Enter. And so now it understands, this formula understands perfectly that that is a named range that refers to a cell. But name means there's some word uh, in a formula that's not recognized either as text in quotes or as a named range. NA means not available. So this formula right here, the VLOOKUP is looking at this table right here, and it's looking in E4, right? So it can't find cool. But as soon as I put, so NA means not available. And you see this a lot with all the lookups, which we will get to uh, uh, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, um, 
look up and others, not available. But as soon as we change this to two, for example, then the V lookup can do its case. It races down here, it finds the two, it jumps over, it brings the blue back to the cell. Reference error. This is a very important error. This usually means that the um, cell has been deleted. So for example, I had this cell here looking at this, uh, this formula looking at A1, and then I deleted A1, and so it's like, reference, that cell reference is gone is what it's saying. Let's try it over here. Equals this right here. Actually, I better be careful here. I'm going to uh, scroll way down here and say uh, cell E12. So enter. So right now, it's looking at E12. But watch this. We'll go delete E12. Right click, delete. Dangerous move with cells. I'm going to shift cells uh, up. Click cell, and so now you have a reference error because we've deleted that. It's like, I don't know where it is. Value error. This usually means that there is an incorrect argument in a function or some sort of uh, operation that's not allowed. For example, if I highlight equals that, and I'm not making an array formula, it has no idea what to do with it. F2 colon G3, so it'll give you a value. Another example is uh, when you try to add a word and a number. Excel is like, I don't know how to add the color blue and two. So those are examples of value errors. Obviously, in this case, if you were trying to fix it, you would then highlight whatever cell you meant to select. Uh, and in terms of this reference one, obviously, you'd have to hunt down uh, whatever cell this used to be and fix it. Number. Uh, this usually means that the number somehow is not a allowed, like it's too big in this case. Or some functions like the uh, internal rate of return, which iterate back and forth when it can't find a solution. So number means there's some problem with the number. Divide by, and so what you do in this case is you go, oh, OK, I can't use that big number. So you put a smaller number. Or um, iter if you couldn't iterate on an IRR function, then you'd have to examine your inputs and uh, change something, perhaps uh, whatever it might be. Divide by 0. Easily, we know what this is. We cannot divide by 0. So it says you can't divide by 0. Immediately, you'd say, OK, there's a blank there. So you'd either uh, convert this formula to an if that would say something like, if this cell is blank, then put blank, otherwise evaluate. Or if, in, in fact, you needed a number there, then of course you'd put uh, your number there and it would calculate. So that's how you'd solve that one. Uh, and uh, a couple more. Circular cell reference. So if I say equals this, and now I'm sitting in cell E9 plus E9, Control-Enter, it gives you a circular reference warning. I'm going to click OK. And it will pop this up here. Uh, what it's saying is, I really can't calculate the answer you want because the answer you want is included in the calculation. Now, there are some examples where you would want a circular reference and you could force the issue. Uh, if you search at the, my YouTube channel, I have a video exactly on this topic called uh, circular reference. And I have a note in the spreadsheet also. Null, that means when there's no intersection. In fact, in the last video, uh, uh, number 24, we had a null error because I made a mistake. What it means is there's no intersection because this is the intersection operator, the space. There is no overlap. So null means there is no overlap. There's no intersection. All right, so that's um, a few common problems um, and how you might deal with them. When we come back, we're going to actually have to deal with other people's spreadsheets where we get a spreadsheet filled with problems and we have to fix them. All right, see you next trick.